Hello my YouTube friends, today we're going to talk about OBS versus Restream IO Studio for adding a guest. Which one is going to work best for your machine, your internet connection, and your equipment. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you know when we have new content that comes out. For the purposes of full disclosure, this video has been sponsored by Restream IO. And for those who have been around my channel for any length of time or for any new folks, you guys should understand that doesn't guarantee I'm going to give glowing reviews and talk about how awesome the software is. Let's face it. Every software has flaws. I'm gonna make sure that I point out the good and the bad of everything that I review here and make sure that you can find the best piece of software for your live streams. That's what's most important to me. We're gonna do OBS Studio first and there's a couple of things we need to install. So let's jump right into the computer and get working on that. The links to these plugins will be in the description but I'll walk you through the setup. The first thing I do is go to this OBS software page here. It's actually part of the forum. Then I click the release page on GitHub. Then scroll down to the OS you're using, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. There are two things you need to download and make sure are installed on your computer. The NDI runtime and the actual NDI plugin. So I download the NDI runtime file. Once you download it, you go to the location, you double click it, then you click continue. After clicking continue a couple of times, you can install it. Now that I have the runtime installed, I need to download the actual plugin file. To do that, I just follow the instructions. I download the plugin file for my Mac. I double click it or on Mac, you can run into this problem where it doesn't like it because it's from the internet. So you can right click on it and click open and then open again. Then I just follow through the installation once it's installed, you can open OBS Studio. If you click Tools at the top, you're going to see NDI Output Settings. That means you installed it properly. Let's go into Skype on the computer and set it up so we can use it in OBS. When you have Skype open, you want to go to Preferences. This is going to be located in different places on Windows and Mac, but it's going to have the same features once you open up your Preferences. Then we want to go to Calling. We want to click Advanced. And we just want to make sure this allow NDI usage is checked. And that's all we need. We can exit out of here. Now we want to add our guests. So we're going to go into Skype and click meet now to create a new meeting. In the meet now window, you can just copy this link out and give it to whoever you want to join this call. In this case, I'm going to paste it to a couple of different locations to invite a few guests. Then I'll go back into meet now and I'm going to join the call. And you can see immediately Michael T. Panetta is already on this call. And there's my buddy Jelly Duck and Joe. So now we have three folks that are on this one Skype call. Next, I wanna add them into our live stream. You can see here, I've already added my camera and microphone into the live stream. So to add a guest, we're gonna click that plus sign and we're gonna to go to NDI source. I'm gonna type in the name of my guest here, in this case, Joe, and I'm gonna select Joe's input window. Then I'm gonna click OK. You can see it's added Joe to the stream. All I have to do is size him up and then move his window behind my overlay and we're all ready to go. So that people know who Joe is, I'm gonna add his name in text here. So we're gonna call this text Joe. I'm going to select my font. I'm gonna put a little outline behind it. Then I'm gonna resize it and move it into Joe's window. Next, I'm going to add Jelly Duck. So I go ahead and I click the plus button, add NDI source. I'm gonna type in the name of the person I'm adding, in this case, Jelly. Then I'm gonna select Jelly Duck's window in the source name. Click OK, and there we go. Now I can just resize this. Now I'm gonna add some text, change the font, put Jelly's name in there, add a little black outline around it, move it into place. And now I'm gonna add Michael T. Panetta. So all I need to do again is click the plus, go to NDI source, select Michael T. Panetta's Skype input, click OK, it adds that window. And then I'm gonna move it where I want it, resize it, and move it down here below my overlay so he's set up properly. Then I'm gonna add his text in here. The same way as we did the others, I'll select the font, put his name in there, put that outline in the text, move it to where I want it to be. And you can see it's not showing up there because it's actually below the proper location. So now I'm just gonna reorder these windows so that everything is set up properly. 
and everyone is in the proper location with the proper sizing. This seems like a long, complicated process, but once you have NDI installed and you have an overlay set up, it's really, really easy to add these guests and the quality of the video connection and the quality of the audio connection that you get is absolutely awesome. You can see that using NDI also solves the problem with Mac having separate input devices for the audio. If I go down and I scroll through Audio Mixer, you can see each person has their own audio input and I can mute them individually by just clicking the little speaker next to their audio and it will turn it off. So let's see how you add a guest in Restream IO Studio. By the way, if you're interested in checking out Restream IO Studio for yourself, there is a link in the description below so you can check it out. If you've never used Restream IO before and you want to know how to add an account and add your YouTube channel or your Twitch channel or your Facebook, at the end of the video there will be a little link up in one of the top corners that you can click on that will take you to a video that will walk you right through all of the connection stuff that you would have to do in order to use Restream IO. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on this webcam in the top right and we're going to enter the broadcast studio and here you can see I'm in the broadcast studio to add a guest I click this button here and I copy out the link I send it to the friends that I want to add as guests and you can see right here we have Michael T Panetta already popping in in order to add him to the stream all I have to do is click this little slider right here and boom there's Michael T Panetta added to the stream Next, we have Jay show up and we add him to the stream. Michael T. Panetta here joined on his cell phone as well, so we could have that fourth guest. This is to show you that it's really easy for your guest to connect with a cell phone or a PC. It really doesn't matter either way. As long as they have the link, they should be able to connect and it should work great. Now that we have four folks connected, you can see if I click this spotlight button, it will highlight the individual. I really like this feature. It makes it really easy to make someone full screen when they're talking and then minimize them or make them smaller when it's just a panel discussion. You can see the layout buttons on the right hand side will make your windows a little smaller or a little bigger. And this is going to depend on how many guests you actually add to your stream. Restream IO right now can handle up to 10 guests live. That's pretty amazing considering how easy it is to add these folks. So when one of these callers drops off, I want you to see that Restream IO automatically just reconfigures the layout of your scene. So you don't have to worry about things being reorganized or placed in weird locations. It automatically organizes the screen for you in a way that uh, is visually appealing. The other nice thing is I can actually remove myself from the broadcast and my guests can have a conversation on the live stream and I can just be the producer. And I think that's pretty awesome. You could produce live streams with guests for other people and never actually appear. So here's the final verdict when you're adding a guest using OBS Studio or Restream IO Studio. First, let's talk about the ease of adding a guest. With OBS Studio, it can be pretty complicated. There are a lot of steps you have to take care of before you can even start adding your guests. Plus, you're going to probably want to have an overlay and you have to decide on where you're going to place each guest. You have to add the names on your own. Whereas when you look at Restream IO, it's as simple as sharing a link. Those people are added, they put their own names in, those names appear right in the box below them. It's really easy to add a guest with Restream IO Studio, and that is a huge plus. The second thing is computer usage. OBS Studio already takes up a pretty decent amount of CPU usage on most computers and if you're using a Mac it may already struggle just with a regular live stream so when you start adding guests it can really become a problem and you can just get choppy guests choppy video choppy audio it can be a real hassle restream IO studio application is browser based which means you have to connect to it with your machine but all of your users are going to connect directly to restream IO when they're added as a guest your machine doesn't have to do any of that processing. And that means you don't need anywhere near as good a machine to actually have an effective live stream with lots of guests if you're using Restream IO. And this is huge for Mac users who want to stream live guests. 
They don't have to worry at all about the power of their machine for live streaming. What about audio options? Well, you have a lot more options with OBS Studio than you do with Restream.io. You can adjust individual guest volume and you can even mute an individual guest. On Restream.io, you don't have any of these options. The guest audio is what it is. If they didn't set it up right when they entered the broadcast studio, it's not gonna broadcast right either and you don't have any control over muting them. All you can really do is just remove them from the stream if their audio isn't right. As far as options and features go, you have a heck of a lot more versatility in what you can do with your guests with OBS Studio, there's no question. But you pay for all those extra features with a heck of a lot more complexity and a lot more things that could possibly go wrong. When you go live with Restream.io and you're adding a guest, there's not much to go wrong. Your guest comes into the studio and you add them. It's really, really simple. But just for plain old options and features, I'd have to say that OBS wins this hands down. So what's the final verdict? Which one is best for you is going to depend on two factors. One, what exactly you're trying to do with the whole live stream, and two, the power of your equipment. Now, if your equipment is not very powerful, your best choice is definitely Restream I.O. You don't have to run any of it on your computer. And you can add guests and do lots of other things with Restream IO Studio without having to worry about whether your computer is going to bog down, or whether things are going to be choppy. You don't have to be concerned about that. So if you don't have a powerful computer, Restream IO is probably your best bet. One more feature I definitely should mention about Restream IO Studio. You can multi-stream. In other words, when you're adding all these guests, you can stream to Facebook. But you can also stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Or Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch at the same time. Or any combination of all kinds of different sites. And you can see all the chats right in the Restream IO Studio box. It's really cool. If, on the other hand, you have a pretty powerful computer and there are a lot of other aspects of live streaming that you want to add to your stream, plus the ability to control more audio pieces, then OBS Studio might be for you. But you should always keep in mind that if you just want a simple stream where you're adding guests to have a conversation and you don't need a lot of other bells and whistles, there's a much better chance that that stream's going to go off without a hitch when you use Restream.io than with OBS Studio. There's a link to both softwares in the description if you want to check them out yourself. And here is the link where I show you how to fully set up Restream I.O. and check out all of the features. Did you know that you can use Restream I.O. to stream your OBS broadcast to multiple platforms like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch at the same time? Well, here's a video that shows you how. If you want to see how Restream I.O. stacks up against StreamYard, you should check this video out right here. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.